Rick McCrank, dude. <laughs> Hi, Lee. How you doing, man? What brings you to town? Uh, my brother lives here in Brooklyn. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I had a little chunk of time and I was decided to come visit. Yeah. Sick. A couple nieces. Yeah, you come out often or like? Uh, I used to come out here kind of often. My ex used to live here, so I'd kind of secretly come and hang out in the Upper West Side and do my quiet thing there. But yeah. now I, uh, yeah, I come out a little bit to visit my brother. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I nice. don't really kind of get in the mix of anything. I just kind of do family shit. <laughs> so you're not going to Max Fish and stuff? No, I've been to Max Fish since like 2002 or something. <laughs> and I wore headphones in there, I was such a loser. <laughs> I don't even, I was like, it was cool, but I was just like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> those egos, why, why those it? egos? Yeah, every, yeah, they were like super trendy. Everybody yeah. had that. It was like the, the, the headphones to. I just put on like my game. modest mouse or whatever at the time. <laughs> Why'd you go? I don't know. I was on tour with some people and they were there. And, I don't know. and then I went all night once with Atiba and he was like playing poker with like, with Mark Razzo and Tino, I think. And. So we were there till like 6 a.m. once, and I was just hanging out watching them gamble because I don't gamble. <laughs> don't drink, don't gamble. Did you have a good time? I did, yeah, it was really nice. What, what, do you like New York? Or do you think it's somewhere, like, could you see yourself living here? Or? I love New York, but I couldn't live here, no. Yeah. Just not my scene. I'm kind of like a, I'm pretty Canadian. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I kind of like where I'm at. I like the mountains and the ocean and things like that. And, mm -hmm. But I love visiting here. I've, I've spent a lot of time here, but yeah, on the down low. You know, it's funny because I didn't really, I never, I didn't really realize you were an East Coast guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, Eastern. <laughs> yeah, I'm from just north of here, really. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty close. Yeah, right? Ottawa. Yeah. When you were young, you never like drive down to New York or like to. Uh, once I went to, to once I went to Syracuse for right. like a straight edge hardcore show that my friends brought me to, and it was like fucking crazy. <laughs> I was like so little and just like, ah. <laughs> I had never seen a scene like that before. And then go, like going through the border, how was, was that like? It was like non-existent. Really? Like this is like 93 or something. They weren't really And like... it was like, I think I had a bus pass or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> like you just, you just go in. That was pre 9-11, you know? It was like, yeah. It's way easier. <laughs> yeah, what? I was just a kid with some kids. Yeah, and like a 16-year-old like, <laughs> dude that drove us. What about in. going back in? That was fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're in a different world. Yeah, I remember when we would go, always go to Vancouver. Somebody would like always forget their ID or something, and we'd have to sleep in Bellingham, yeah. in Washington. Yeah, and then like somebody's mom would like fax it over, and that used to work. Just a fax. Yeah, like a fax yeah. of an ID, and then we'd like the yeah. next morning we'd like get to. They let us in or something. Yeah, that's yeah. I miss those days. It's kind of like how Europe is. You just mm -hmm. drive through borders and no one cares. It's just an invisible yeah. line. <laughs> did you grow up like in the city of Ottawa, or did you grow up like outside? Uh, yeah, like kind of like on the edge of the city in the eastern side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I was there until I was 17, and then I moved to the west coast. So this was like in the 80s. It's the it's like the political capital of the country. Um, and in the 80s, you probably remember, there was like a weird, it was kind of like negative scenes, like the late 80s. And there was like, you know, like, I just remember like lots of the kids in my high school were Nazis. Really? Like it was a weird, that, that town had some weird like dark shit, mm -hmm. like really angry people mm. in that time. And uh, it's weird, like I had a friend and like he was a Nazi. And then later I was just like, this is fucked up. And like, yeah, you're like not what? your friend anymore, you know, like. And other friends, yeah, it was like a trend, kind of. It was really weird. Like the bomber jackets. Skinhead. The skinhead thing, yeah. yeah. It was so, like, I have a lot of my memories in high school were like that weird, angry time. Yeah. And, and you're then, like, I'm just chilling, man. Yeah, I just <laughs> want to go skating. But, I mean, it's, it's, now it's like a totally different place. I actually don't, I haven't been there in a really long time. My family moved out west after mm -hmm. I did, so. The um, Hells Angels are pretty big out there, too. Man. Yeah, in Vancouver they are, <clears> for sure. <throat> yeah. Gang scene. Yeah. It's a lot of like moving drugs and stuff. And yeah. But yeah, it's a, but yeah, Ottawa was like, it was like nice, but I, as a teenager, I was like, I gotta, I just gotta go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And as an adult, I'd think I'd kind of like it there. Yeah. But I remember I moved, I, like, I took a train halfway across the country to where my sister lived in Winnipeg. 
And then I drove, or took a bus to, it was like Whistler, mm -hmm. like mountain town. And like my- A bus from Ottawa. From Winnipeg. Oh, from Winnipeg. So halfway across on a train and then the other half on a bus. And then uh, I got to Whistler and I got off the bus and my friend picked me up because she lived there. And we got a taxi and like the, the taxi driver had like dreadlocks and was listening to Beastie Boys and stuff. And I was just like, blew my mind. You're like sold. <laughs> yeah, I was like, because I'm from this really conservative city. And yeah. I didn't think it existed. Like the world is different, other places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, I was like, oh, my people are here. <laughs> so I never left. Yeah. <laughs> what were you into like before you started skating? Like, were you Shit. playing sports? Or? Um, yeah, I kind of like dabbled in a lot of different things, but I wasn't really serious about anything. Mm -hmm. I liked riding my bike around. I started when I was like 11, so I was like, mm -hmm. I was a kid. Played started around. skating. Yeah. So like that was kind of like one of the first things you were like. That was, this was the first thing I was ever actually just into. Mm -hmm. That pick it up, never want to put it down. Yeah. It was just like, yeah. My brother had a board, and then my brother who lives here actually, he had a board, and I would just steal it all the time. And then <laughs> he wasn't really committed to it, so I would like a little more of mine, you know. Yeah. It just became yours. <laughs> well, kind of the funny. Here's this. You want to hear the story about it? He, yeah. So this is my first board. <laughs> It was a Vision Agent Orange, mm -hmm. um, like a band board, just kind of a rare board, but um, tracker trucks and like two blurs and two bullets. They're just weird wheels. Mm -hmm. But um, I always thought he was like, because so he was getting into a lot of trouble. Like he had to go to Camp Dare and all this shit. Like we, uh, we grew up with my mom, who's a single mom, with four kids, and we were kind of wild. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was getting into all this trouble, and then. Um, Social workers were kind of just like, you have to go live with your dad, or like, we re recommend he should go live with his dad. Where was he? Where is he? He was in Edmonton on like the other side of the country. Okay. So he was leaving, and my memory was like, he was like, you can have my board, like, you know, I'm mm. gonna miss you, here's my skateboard. And then just like last year, he's like, no, like, he had, <laughs> he had this like moose antler that he got at Camp Dare, and uh, he's like, I can't pack this thing. And he's like, to my other brother, he's like, hey, do you want this? And my mm -hmm. brother's like, yeah, great, the moose antler. <laughs> and then I, apparently I just started bawling and crying, like, he gets stuff and I don't get stuff. <laughs> and he was just like, oh, uh, here, just take this. <laughs> and then like, that's how I got my first board. I just fucking <laughs> cried like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but you had already been using it a little bit. I had bit. been using it, yeah. But yeah. it was probably, it at that time, it was more like a children's toy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I was like kneeboarding on it a lot. But I would like start to go a little further from the neighborhood already with it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was kind of like bummed when he told me that story. How long did he have to go away for? He moved away, yeah. And that was it? Yeah, yeah. it was really hard for me, like lost yeah, my big gonna, brother. Yeah, yeah was, that must have been a difficult like, thing to deal with. Huh? Yeah, it sucked. Yeah, yeah but this, the, I think the skating was, it's always kind of been for me, like life was pretty hard for us, but like it's always been like a great, that release, you know, it was like mm -hmm. I said, I'd go a little further from the neighborhood, it just sort of like opened up my world and it was always like, a, an, like an emotional release thing. What an amazing gift, though, from him to you. Yeah. Because of what you did with it. Exactly. Like yeah. you, like him giving you that board because he has to go away, and then now you becoming yeah. like one of the most famous skate, best skaters of all time. In your opinion, <laughs> it's in his opinion. In lots of people's yeah. opinions. Yeah, okay. yeah. That could. That's like. I mean, I think that's I, incredible. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't. I guess I was drawn to it for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but it was like such a weird moment of just like bing. Mm -hmm. And then and then this is like from my brother, so yeah. it's like really important. I always kept that board and then when I moved out, my mom had it and then somehow went to my aunt and I don't know where it went. Mm -hmm. I wonder if she still has it. It's probably like sitting in her attic or something. Yeah, it had cool grip tape art, like this crying face and stuff. <laughs> it was, I was just staring at it all. But, <laughs> yeah. I grew up with a single mom too and like that's, um, interesting because I really kind of like took advantage of that, you know, what like do you mean? took advantage oh, like of the fact, the freedom, the freedom. because yeah. you can kind of, you know, I, I, I like was skating with this kid one day and he was like, you spend the night at my house. And I was like, my mom didn't want to want me to spend the night. Yeah. You know, they're just like, no, come home. And then he was like, it was like a weird light bulb that clicked in my head. I was like, I got to go home, dude. And he's like, why? What's she going to do? Yeah. What's she going to do? And I was like, yeah. 
<laughs> it was so fucking yeah. crazy. And I was like, what is she going to do? Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't have anything to take from me. And like, you know, we grew up super poor. So yeah. I was like, I can just. And from that day on, I kind of like was an asshole. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I <laughs> just, wasn't just an asshole. Just staying out late. Not, yeah. not an asshole. Just staying out late and kind of like doing yeah. whatever Siblings? I wanted. Siblings? Yeah, I had a younger brother oh, also. Oh, you were the older one. Okay. Yeah. So I would take care of him, and yeah. then as soon as she got home, I would be like, okay. later. So my brothers would be like skipping school, going downtown every day, and they would just take me mm -hmm. like as a little kid. Yeah. So like they brought me along. Yeah. And I remember we just have our like bag lunch, and we'd be like at the mall downtown, like on the roof of it. Like mm -hmm. we were wild. And then I just remember just like throwing my lunch bag off the roof and just like, <laughs> fuck, I should have eaten that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we had, we had that same thing. Like just my mom couldn't handle, she had four kids, a, a daughter and three boys. So it was just like, she just couldn't handle like keeping tabs on everybody and mm -hmm. we just would get in trouble and stuff. So did you and your brother like ever skate together? Like, have you guys a little bit, together? like he, it was his thing, and he didn't want me to use it, and then, oh yeah, so then he gave me the board, and then he went to live with my dad, and I guess he like, within a month, moved out on his own, because mm -hmm. like, my dad wasn't doing it for him, and then uh, he came back to visit, I don't know, about a year after that, and we went skating, and I was way better than him already. <laughs> he was never that great, but like, how did he feel about that? He was that? bombed. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was like, he's like, oh, I don't like skating with you, because <laughs> like it was, yeah, he was. I remember that clearly where we were, everything. and then because I could do kickflips and stuff, and that was like, like in the eighties. Like I think it was a pretty early kickflipper, but it was just like. Yeah, so he didn't want to skate with me anymore. <laughs> and then he was just moved on. He was like one of the first alternative guys. You know, uh. like, so he just get into bands and stuff. Do you think that him moving away was good for him? Like, Oh, yeah. Yeah, saved his life, I think. Yeah. Mm. He went, so he went, moved in with my dad and then out from my dad and then moved in, I guess, maybe like a good group of people he met. And then he uh, put himself back into high school. Mm -hmm. finished high school and then eventually moved back to where my mom lives and went to college and stuff just like self-led stuff and now he's like this kind of really fancy journalist here and oh nice he works for Reuters like it was a huge company in Times Square oh that's amazing kind of seniority and like just kind of built his whole life out of nothing which is really commendable in the end it all everything worked out yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it was a struggle yeah and yeah it was, he's really inspiring i think that's amazing yeah because a lot of people tend to go down that like dark route mm -hmm. you know you don't have stuff and you just kind of stay in that realm yeah we came from like an addicted family and stuff so like a lot of people would just kind of follow that mm -hmm. but i guess him and i kind of maybe i followed his his path a little bit and like trying to be a good person Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys are still super close now, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's cool. We bonded pretty, like as adults, we bonded a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a good guy. I was going to ask you <clears throat> earlier, <clears throat> had, did you ever do any like Canadian stuff like ice fishing or anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> I fished once in a, in a, in a wet river. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with my uncle and I caught a fish and then he made me gut it and then never fished again. <laughs> I was like, I just watched the thing like suffocate. He didn't like kill it. And I was like, no, this is whack. <laughs> I really loved it until I caught it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's fun. It's it's like, you know, it's fun to catch things. But catch and release, you can let it yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I could even do that. Yeah. I'm kind of soft. Yeah. So who was your original skate crew, like, when you started skating? Um, it was my neighborhood friends, this kid Josh, who was in it for a little bit. And then my friend Eric Lalonde, I think it was his last name. Eric Lalonde, yeah. French-Canadian. Mm -hmm. And he was, like, really good and had crazy pop and... And I didn't follow like videos or magazines at all for so long, but he kind of knew a little bit. So he'd be like, that's called a nolly and like, mm -hmm. try this. And so me and him would, I guess it was just me and him. We would just kind of travel around the city and skate, yeah. Is he still skating now or? I don't think so. Yeah. I, he lived in like out west too. And he's one of my friends that moved out there. So I kind of followed them. Mm -hmm. And so like already after a few months of him living there, like I moved out. And he was already kind of over our scene. Mm -hmm. He was like a new person. Moved on to something yeah. else. Yeah. He had like a job and yeah. girlfriend and stuff. 
Okay. Growing up, you grew Let's up. Go, uh, <laughs> being so close to Montreal, did you do you speak in a little bit of French at all? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I grew up like Ottawa is like the border with the French province called Quebec, mm -hmm. and so like Eric and like most of my friends are French Canadian. So mm -hmm. I go to their houses and their their families wouldn't even speak English. Like some of them didn't even know English, which is crazy. <laughs> Yeah, isn't that crazy? <laughs> I think it's so cool that we have like yeah, it's cool. this whole section of our country where people don't even know English. It's, no, it's amazing. It, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. But yeah, uh, I picked up a good amount of French. I I think I could fully learn it all if I yeah. immerse myself. It's definitely like lurking yeah. somewhere. Did in you there. live in France or just Spain? No, I lived in Spain. Yeah. But the thing was, in <clears throat> Spain, I actually hung out with a lot of French people. Yeah. So I don't. I don't really speak it, but I can kind of understand it pretty well. Like, Mailed. Yeah. <laughs> it's, they always talk about the French Canadian. The f French people in France talk a lot of shit about the French yeah. Canadian. It's like a weird um, slangy language to them. Yeah. They don't understand it. They say that it's like French from like 500 years ago. Yeah. Or <laughs> it's weird. Like they'll make up, f so there'll be a new invention and it'll be an English thing. Like actually parking lots. Mm -hmm. Like the French in France say parking lot. <laughs> and in Canada they say in station month. Like they make a French word up. Yeah. Like they're very serious about it. Yeah. Language. Even in France, like all the stop signs say stop. And in, in uh, Quebec they say arrête. Arrête. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, they're very, very serious. They're like, <laughs> we're French. <laughs> yeah, they're like, they're like, you know, surrounded by the English and mm -hmm. they're sort of like holding fo their fort. Exactly. They're very like, yeah, I, I think it's cool. So how did you, you, you touched on it a little bit, like what made you want to move all the way across the country to Whistler? Just a, like a bunch of my friends did it. I was into skating and snowboarding mm -hmm. and a bunch of my friends, like we were watching videos and there was like early videos of snowboarding in Whistler. And then so my friends, uh, I'd say three or four of my friends moved there, like my close friends. So I just, I was like, I'm gonna do that too. So mm -hmm. I like dropped out of school I got a job at like this cafeteria where I was like supposed to just be a dishwasher, but then I was like helping them cook and stuff, mm -hmm. and then just saved every penny and then got on the train. It was yeah. kind of random. Like I never been to Whistler. When I think about it, all I think about is like a snowy mountain town. Like yeah, what? it's a ski resort yeah. town. That's all it is. <clears throat> it's different now. It's more like families and stuff. It's mm -hmm. growing, but when I lived there, yeah, it was just like huge it's like the like wins like best resort every year it's like mm -hmm. these huge ski hills and then like a little village in the middle it's kind mm -hmm. of like switzerland or something yeah so when you got there like what was your life like like what were you what were you doing like um i uh, got off the bus <clears throat> and then it was like my first girlfriend like i met this girl from my hometown who was visiting she had lived in whistler and she came back to visit and she mm -hmm. was flirting with me i was like no way I was like pretty slow. There's always slow. a girl involved. In yeah, I was story. pretty slow with dating. <laughs> yeah. And then I was already going to go, and then she's like, you should. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, cool. So then I moved there, and I moved in with her, and it was like the first girlfriend ever. Like, never even kissed a girl or anything. I was like, mm -hmm. so just skating. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so I, yeah, I just did that. I was like, hang out with them. And then, like, I got a job at, like, a fast food restaurant, A&W, for, I worked there for, like, three days. What station were you on? Like the Fry station or the I can't burger? even remember. But yeah, it was like, and there would be like these alerts, like it's like a six now, like you got to work this fast. I was like, this sucks. And then my friend got me a job at this bar working from two in the morning till 10 in the morning. I did that oh for like three days. <laughs> and then I got a job at this like candy store and then, you know. But during this period of time, like, you're, you're, is being sponsored something that you no. want to do? Or, like, no, are you no. thinking about professional skating? Or No, not at all. I, I mean, I lived in Ottawa, and I got good at skating. And I got sponsored by this um, really small shop that kind of popped up in a boys and girls club, actually. So there was this boys and girls club that had this little skate park mm -hmm. built into it. This, this guy built the ramps, Claude Renier. Mm -hmm. And then he eventually... Like, we were just there all the time once we discovered it. Like, oh, my God, there's a fucking skate park in our mm -hmm. town. This is crazy. And then, because it was, like, here, it was, like, winters are freezing. So then, uh, eventually, he ended up opening this little shop in there called Skate City and uh, sponsored me, I guess. And then uh, that's as far as I thought it would be, you know? Mm -hmm. I wasn't think I was going to be a pro skater. But my brother said, again, he was like, you always said you were going to be a pro skater. 
I never remember saying that. Like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> He's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be pro yeah. I don't feel like, I don't really see you like saying something like I that. I know. <laughs> I think I say things to my brother differently. Than, like, yeah. I, mean, I was trying to impress him probably. He was like my hero. So yeah. Like, ah. Well, where did you see your life going at the time? Like, what, did, what were you... Moved to, like, as far as my nose, like, I don't know, moved to Whistler and, like, discovered powder, like, yeah. snowboarding and big mountains. And, I, and then, in, in those days, like, in your early 20s, you kind of, you don't think too far ahead. No. Like, everything is like... I had no idea how. That's, yeah. I like, had, like, no training. This is no what I want to do today, and that's it. Yeah, like, my mom, like, was on welfare. We were just, like, I didn't have anybody, like, teaching me... This is what you do. You go to school, you get a job, you do anything like that. We just were feral or just wild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, just, you just find, like, basically my whole life has been like this. Like, it's just been, I've been on this river, like a leaf on a river, and just flowing with it. And then if some sort of opportunity comes by that feels right, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. And it's worked out pretty good. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to stress, there was like 10 years at the end. Of my like maybe in like the 2000s early 2000s where i'd just be like what am i gonna do after skating because mm -hmm. i have a kid you know so i'm just like an insomnia for like 10 years mm -hmm. and then one day i was just like just float down this river like you've always done you'll be fine and then i've been kind of pretty happy ever since yeah yeah i think that's a good way i think everybody <laughs> like there's uh, life presents opportunities and then you just have to be aware enough to like take them when they're presented to you. Right. You know, I got to know the right ones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like that's why I didn't ride for Rex shoes. <laughs> 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 Pretty good offer. <laughs> Pretty good offer. <laughs> I was like, Big paycheck, but yeah. uh... <laughs> I'll stay with S. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I was just moving. To, I moved to that town and just to like snowboard that season and then mm -hmm. I happened to move into this house. My girlfriend had, uh, lived in this house where this woman started a skateboard brand called Cherry Bombs. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how it happened. It's just random. So then you get on Cherry Bombs. Yeah. So. That was uh, uh, your partner, Michelle? Uh, no. Is her name Michelle? This is a different Michelle. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. This is Michelle McBurney. Mm -hmm. She was great, but she, she had like, a, like basically like a bolt company for snowboarding, like shorties. Mm -hmm. called Cherry Bombs, mm -hmm. and then uh, she's like, I'm going to start a skateboard brand, and then my girlfriend at the time was like, Rick's actually a pretty good skater, and then she saw me ollie like a 10 stair and whistler, <laughs> she's like, you are good, you're on, <laughs> yeah. here's your contract, <laughs> yeah, so then it was like, she just like, um, pretty soon, like, took me on a road trip to San Francisco, mm -hmm. and that was cool. And then how did Kenny Reed get down with that also? I don't, so, yeah, so she had a connection in San Francisco. Turns out there was a little, she was like doing a little more than skateboarding. There's a little bit of like weed involved with um, borders. There's always a little weed. Yeah. There's uh, always a girl or weed involved. Yeah. <laughs> Especially on the West Coast. <laughs> yeah. So there was a little bit of like the maid coming into SF, um, which I didn't know about. But, um, so anyway, she had like, like an SF like port. Mm -hmm. And so she had new people there. And I do not know how she, she met Kenny Reed, but Kenny Reed was on Cherry Bombs. Was he already living in SF at the time? He was, yeah. He had come from Albany or wherever he's from. I think he's from Smoky Hollow. S no, Sleepy Hollow. Sleepy Hollow, Sleepy yeah. Hollow yeah. yeah. Ichabod Crane. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, so I actually met him there. Mm -hmm. And then... So you guys meet up, you're like, sick dude, I'm on Cherry Bomb, you're yeah. on Cherry Bomb, like, yeah. let's skate, fucking. It's funny, because I didn't know shit about skateboard world stuff, mm -hmm. like industry or anything. At all. I actually met Greg Carroll on that trip and he gave me some trucks and some pants. It was very nice. But um, Kenny knew kind of like the etiquette of coming up in skating and she was like, You're gonna have a board. And he's like, Don't give me a fucking board. Yeah, like, he's like, I'm not ready. Yeah, he's like, he just knew. Mm -hmm. He was kind of stressed about it. But um, I was like, Wouldn't it be cool to have a board? <laughs> <laughs> and then they did that to me and gave me a board. So you turned pro for Cherry Bomb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cherry bombs. The first pro model was like this dude like violently puking into a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> well, why? I don't know. Just the guy, our, our friend Ross, who was doing the graphics, he liked to draw stuff like that. Like, what year was that? Like, what year did that all happen? This is probably like 95. Mm. Yeah, 95, 96. I think 95. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool, though. We went to Europe, like the 
I, I went in, so I got to, they had that Slam City Jam contest in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And they're like, uh, three amateurs can enter it and stay amateur mm -hmm. if you um, go to this local contest. So I went to that, ended up winning it, and then went into Slam City Jam. And uh, after that, they, I was allowed to go to the other World Cup contests. Like uh, Dor Dortmund. Dortmund. Oh, it was Munster. Grand Man, I Prix, think. Munster. Yeah. So that year we went, Cherry Bombs went on tour to Europe. It was cool. And Michelle had like a duffel bag full of boards that she was just selling along the road. And Who was on the tour? Just, just me and Michelle, I think. Yeah. I was like the guy that could skate good. <laughs> and it was rad. Andy Reid was like not really a contest guy, no. you know? Yeah. <laughs> it was so rad. Yeah. Everybody thought that it was like we're a weird relationship, I think. But, yeah. Um, but last time I saw, not the last time, but one of the last times I saw Jake Phelps, it was at, was at some like video premiere. I can't even remember which one. He was like in the booths or whatever, and he's like, Jerry Bombs, 1995, <laughs> you and that Michelle chick, duffel bag full of boards. I was like, holy shit, dude. How do you know this? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> and it was, I was like, damn. So, so impressed with that guy's brain. He was a fucking genius. It's just like every, like, I was so minute, you know? But so know. on that first trip to SF, like, where yeah. did you guys skate? Like, where did you guys, did Fuck you guys go to Embarcadero or um, Pier 7? Yeah, I went to Embarcadero. I put my board down. I skated from like there to there, and this lady cop took my board and gave me a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, the only time you ever skated there. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's like me at Love Park. I skated Love Park for five minutes in my whole life, and then we got kicked out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, fucking, what an asshole. <laughs> did I you guys get... go to the pier, or what did you? Where did you? What did you um, guys do? that first trip, I'm trying to remember, like the. It was like me and Kenny skated the city around the, around the city, and there was no like photos or filming. Mm -hmm. Oh, I went. Keegan Sauter was on as well, mm. and I think this might have been our second trip there. But um, we linked up with Cairo mm -hmm. when he was like glasses and Nolly Hart flipping the block and Nolly stuff. Nolly Hart and, like, guy. <laughs> that was insane. He was and like Elias Bingham and yeah. a bunch of that crew, and uh, and that night Cairo ollied at the <clears throat> at the library off the ledge. Over the sidewalk, over the the meter, over the, the parking, parking meter. meter. Yeah, for like I don't think he filmed it. He all did that gap that night when we were there. Yeah, that's that was crazy. insane. So we skated the library. We just skated. The through library the was a lot of fun, man. That was yeah. a lot of fun. Bond Lot Hills yeah. skated like didn't like film anything or shoot any mm -hmm. photos at all. But yeah. how did you meet Greg? Michelle knew him somehow. Oh, okay. So like we went to think mm -hmm. and like venture, and then yeah. He gave me some ventures and... Got some fucking trucks for you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gonna fucking ride these, though? Yeah. <laughs> <You're> intimidating. <laughs> yeah, that, was, like his, his that was his heyday. <laughs> Not like his brother. <laughs> no, actually, Mike, I saw Mike on that trip, too. Parked in front of FTC. Mike went in, I can't remember who he was with, but he had, like, full, like, snowboard goggle tan. I was like, no way, my hair is snowboards. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to ask you that, like when, for example, when virtual reality was out and like Tony and Ferguson and Rick yeah. Howard and those guys were like killing the new spot, were you like in Whistler at the time? Like Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was in Whistler. I didn't so Tony and I are from the same town, but I didn't know him. He moved out west to Vancouver before I started hanging out downtown. Wait, Tony's from Ottawa? He's from Gatineau, which is like the name. I've known Tony forever. I, how do I not know that, Tony? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> he's from, kind of from Ottawa. He's, yeah. from, he's actually from the French side. Quebec. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, oh, shit. But uh, anyway, he was our local legend, Tony, mm -hmm. Tony Ferguson. Everybody's like talked about it. And then, yeah, so then I lived in Whistler and people, like they were skating New Spot and all these other Vancouver amazing spots. But by the time I moved to Vancouver, a lot of that stuff got capped. Mm -hmm. When did you first meet Tony then? Like, I might have been on Girl. Yeah. Maybe. No, somewhere in Vancouver before that. Had to yeah. Be there. Yeah. I got a question about Canadian skateboarders. Why are they like always so like 
pranksters and like it seems like really? <laughs> yeah like you know like Bill oh, Weiss doing oh, yeah. like making McTwist and like oh, dudes yeah. putting stuff in the middle of the road and like Rick Howard's like a crazy like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's always like in good fun you know <laughs> I don't know maybe we're allowed to get away with that shit a little more like people yeah. don't get like beat up as much right? I was thinking from. about that maybe the cops are like a little more lenient so you can like yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe. I don't know. That's funny. I was kind of like that, too. I was a kid that would always poke everybody. Like, I was like a bully, like this tiny little bully. I was talking to my daughter about that. I was like, that was kind of shitty. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I uh, saw somewhere where you kind of said, like, you, you touched on it a little bit earlier, where you're like, I didn't really know a, a lot about the way things worked. Yeah. You called yourself like kind of like a kook, I or you? <laughs> yeah. I did the Benny Hanna. Yeah, but I don't know it was really fun to do. But there's, I, I actually <laughs> think there's something like really pure and genuine about that, and it's probably why you're the type of skater that you are now because you were like in your own world doing your own thing. It was always like that. Like when I was <clears> back <throat> in Ottawa, I skated. I was called a ramp skater. Mm -hmm. It was like '90s was like you know like. Uh, ledge skating and and it was like like how the 90s has come back now or whatever but like they didn't bring all the asshole stuff mm -hmm. with it it was like people were fucking dicks back then and i just yeah. didn't skate the cool way so i was actually like kind of uh, ostracized in a way and like i remember learning late shove it's and this dude's like nice late late shove it yeah like it was already not cool <laughs> <laughs> i was like fuck but uh yeah i always just kind of liked skating whatever i wanted to skate mm -hmm. so and That's great because, like, even at Embarcadero, there was like so many unwritten rules and like things that people would make fun of you about if you, so that you kind of are limiting yourself of like what you can learn on a yeah. skateboard. Yeah. Because you're like, this isn't cool. That's not cool. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a weird like we're free, but it's just a little rulesy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then also at the same time nowadays, like kids, there can never be a subculture that can grow organically. I don't. I was talking to the about this with a friend. These days? Yeah, nowadays. Because there's so much in outside information that nobody's in their own bubble, in their own world, yeah. doing their own thing and like growing something. You mean like an underground? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> a friend of mine was saying that. He was like, he was like into the hardcore scene. He's like, it's no more underground, dude. He's mm -hmm. like, this SF dude really like tough. I was like, yeah, there is. You just don't know about it. <laughs> it's Maybe there are people but... out there that are just like way underground, yeah. no Instagram, no social media, no nothing, right? Yeah, there are. But it's just really small. Mm -hmm. Like we had bigger ponds of fucking algae growing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure there are, but it's yeah. just, uh, and, but it's like everybody wants to share that. And, but everything, things are way more inclusive now. As you started to like kind of get into the game a little bit more, did um, like did anybody ever kind of like pull you to the side and be like, "Hey, man, you should do things like this, or you should do, you know, dress this way"? Or I almost feel like Colin McKay <clears throat> would like. Sorry, <clears throat> he would be like subconsciously doing that. Mm -hmm. He'd taught me like tricks and treats. Like, he'd be like, that's a treat, that's a trick, that's a treat. Like, you don't do treats. <laughs> Talking about certain tricks, I was like, oh. You know, I can't even remember what certain moves were. Yeah. But it was just like, I never looked at it like that. It was just like, let's learn some shit. Yeah. But um, maybe Colin, yeah. Because, mm -hmm. like, once I got on Plan B, it was like, he kind of took care of me for a while. And I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe him, but nobody else. And I remember, because I was doing... When I was on Cherry Bombs, I was at these events and meeting pro skaters and, and doing Benny Hanna's <laughs> switch. And but that's actually amazing. Yeah. Right? That's like an incredible cool. technical feat on a there skateboard. You go. But, uh, <laughs> switch Benny Hanna. So I wrote, for, I wrote for Cherry Bombs, and Rick Howard called Benny Hanna's Cherry Bombs after that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of crazy he put me on, girl. <laughs> he was, yeah. He was like, early days of me, he was like, what a... Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Especially he's like, no man, I'm from the coop, everything's cool there. And then he's like, uh <laughs> So you never felt pressure to like switch up your whole kit like like a Chris Cole or like a Chris Haslam or something? No. <laughs> no. I felt influenced. Like I was like, I've started hanging with people. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I want to dress a bit like that. Mm -hmm. 
in the end, I shouldn't have like some weird baseball jerseys. <laughs> maybe Eric inspired. <laughs> <laughs> we all go through our phases, though. Yeah, I mean, it was the some whole... have more more intense phases than mm -hmm. others. <laughs> I didn't know, know shit about stylus. Still don't. I, I feel like I kind of do, but I don't. I don't know if I do. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, you're, Lee is OG. Remember that from the four hundred one one. This girl, Lee is OG. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then what, what, uh, what year was it that you won Slam City Jam? Uh, it was like 99 or 2000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I almost feel like there was a little local judge favoritism there, but I don't care. It was awesome. <laughs> I think it's probably like if it's like really close and it's yeah. just right there, yeah. then that favoritism is going to go like At the time, you. it was really important to me. Mm -hmm. I was really stoked. Yeah, I was like, wow, my I local mean, big thing. It was a big thing. It's a big fucking thing. Yeah, that's like me winning like the that back the to the bay back in the bay. San Francisco or something. Yeah, you know? <laughs> like and all my friends and family yeah, there, exactly. like local pride or whatever. That was cool. Yeah, yeah, I really miss that. That Slam City Jam thing was actually super fun. Sounds amazing. Yeah, that's. What did you do that night? I went to this 24-hour uh, vegetarian restaurant <laughs> called the Nom. No yeah. partying. You know what's crazy, though? I did that. I went to the... That's what we always did. Like, all my veggie friends, like Ed, and, like, would come to town, and we'd always go to the Nom. It was, like, the mm -hmm. spot. And uh, so we did that, and it was, like, this really cool feeling, you know? Like, I was, like, this celebrated person that night. And then the next year, I kind of did shitty. And then we went to the Nam, and I remember feeling like, I'm a nobody this year. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Well, it's funny, because, you know, Slam City Jam, that's the only place I've ever cried in public. Really? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I told this story on Bob's shirt. OK. Like, so that was the last skate contest I ever skated in. I think it was like 2001 or something. And we were like, city stars. And Mikey Taylor was the, I was the pro. Yeah. And 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 uh, P Rod was M, and Mikey Taylor was like, uh, just got on the team. And so I think P Rod got like third, and like I, think I remember that Mikey man. Taylor got like fifth, and then I got like eighty something. But I was the pro. Yeah. <laughs> so you. So then I was kind of like, fuck, man. And then like I really like felt like, what the fuck am I doing here, dude? Like huh. this, I and then so like I went under the ramp and had a little like, wow. like a little tear. <laughs> wow, <laughs> reality. <laughs> yeah, life comes at you. <laughs> and yeah, it's P Rod. It's fucking P Rod. Yeah. <laughs> like you can't compare yourself to that. But yeah, that is crazy. You yeah. cried. <laughs> I don't know if I've cried at a contest. <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. And then I remember we went to uh, Rob's and we went and ate at the uh, Cactus Club oh afterwards. God. That's so funny. That was like the polar opposite of my world. Like, that was like the jock restaurant. And I would go to the cool Kareem village. was like, Cactus Club, we're all going. Yeah. And he was like super psyched. Mikey was there, yeah. like pumped and P Rot. And I was just like, just cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> That sucks. Slam City Jam, wow. man. That was the yeah. shit. <laughs> it was shit, good. Man. It was like a bit, of, a bit snowboard rampy. But yeah. It worked for me. I remember, uh, I don't think it was at that contest, but Rally wrote on his shirt, Temporary Vert Skater, at one of those contests, because mm. it was just like nine foot spines and shit. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah, and he's like, this is a street event. Yeah, I remember <laughs> being there and thinking, like, yeah. I can't do anything on yeah. this fucking shit. Yeah, it's like crazy. I, was, I, I thrived in that world. Yeah. Well, that's your like, that's your shit. Yeah. Damn. It was, it was fun though. I mean, going up for that contest, I remember like, <laughs> just always getting into trouble and partying. And was, I mean, you weren't doing that stuff, but no. People were well received. I remember people having a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, people were like Americans come. Yeah, exactly. come play with them. I remember Sheffy did get. Uh, I don't know if you heard that story. Sheffy got beat up by a guy like with no shoes on. You ever heard that story? No, but I believe <laughs> it. Like, we're yeah, like, Canadians, nice, but yeah. like that hockey training is like real. Like, people I think look, it was like a Jamaican guy. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. There's just a lot of dudes that are like mm -hmm. just fisticuffs. Yeah. Like it's weird, just like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. It was always <laughs> something like like I. So, uh, I could be wrong, but I think like the guy like knocked out Greg Carroll and then knocked out Sheffy. Wow, <laughs> that's 
I think <laughs> the guy can fight. Because Sheffy was like golden gloves. And Sheffy was like, like he crazy. was a boxer. Sheffy, I could be wrong, but like yeah, don't I don't remember me, that. Bro. Is that when <laughs> Moses got hurt? Like he got beat up and had like a, a brain swelling thing. Did he? I don't know if it was that same time, but yeah, people would fuck around in this. Even Tony got a little bottle to the yeah. face too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So people would go to this district. It was like party district yeah. in Vancouver, like the clubs. And yeah. There's people that would come in from suburbs that were just like they just wanted to beat people up. Yeah. Yeah. And if you go in and act cocky, it's just like, oh, that's who I'm going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if they know you're American, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Something to prove, you know. We're like the little brother syndrome mm. in a way, you know, maybe. So going from Cherry Bomb to Plan B must have been like quite a huge jump. Yeah, that actually sucked. <laughs> like talk about, I actually might have shed a tear about that. Because <laughs> I was like. <laughs> no pressure. It was insane. It's <clears throat> fucking Plan B. And I'm the cherry bomb guy. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I remember I got on, like Mary Ternaski phoned me and she's like, hey, we're gonna put you on. Um, Colin, it was like through Colin, this connection. And then I flew to California and I skated with Jeremy Ray and Pat Chinita a lot and Colin and, anyway, so then she called me and she's like, we're gonna put you on. And I was just kind of like, great. And I hung up and I was just like, like ghost. And then, like, the next day, I went on a backpacking trip to Costa Rica with my girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, the whole trip, I just didn't want to be there. I was just like, fuck You don't want to be in Costa Rica? I was just like, what am I going to do? Like, it's plan B. Like, <laughs> I'm a fraud. Like, full on, like this. Imposter syndrome. Oh, full on. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. Like, so you didn't feel like you fit? No. Nah, I still don't think I fit then. But it, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it just worked fit. out. But it was just like... Um, yeah, I don't know, Jeremy Ray. When you, got, when you went down to Southern California and you skated with all those guys, did you feel a little more comfortable? Or? Yeah, it was mm -hmm. cool, yeah. But it wasn't like I'm on this team with them and I'm going to put out, a, like they make those videos. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, I actually was staying with Chinita the whole time. and I, did, I stayed with his family a bunch when I would mm -hmm. go down there. It was awesome. They'd always like try to get me to eat meat. <laughs> Big pig, roasted yeah, just pig. like, yeah. I'm like, no, I'm good. Just eat the rice, and then they would like fry an egg for me or something. Yeah, they were, yeah, they were cool. But um, yeah, I was like, I was so stressed. And then I filmed for that video, the Revolution. But it was just like, was Ronnie Bertino in that video too? No. Oh, okay. I don't know what happened with Bertino. Yeah. Or he maybe he was, but I don't think, think he, he was. He was in one of those videos. It's a weird... He did like a switchback lip down a handrail for the... Yeah, like I don't think that was the revolution. Mm -hmm. But, so it was basically just my friends and I handing the camera around <clears throat> downtown Vancouver. It was basically that part. And it was like, I went to the premiere, my name was spelled wrong. Mm -hmm. It was like MCK, <laughs> not MCC. And I was like, whoa. And then I watched the footage and then I was like, fuck, I'm shit. And then all the other footage came out. I was like, what am I doing here? I was so bummed. I hate premieres. <laughs> but then, uh, then after that, I was like, OK. But the reception must have been good, though. I don't think people thought my skating was that good in that video at really? the time. Mm. I remember this one guy. I can't remember. Dan Rogers, remember him? Yeah. He, he's pretty honest. Like, he could maybe be an asshole at the yeah. time. Um, but. I went to some trade show and he was like, it was right after that video and he was just like, he just straight up told me like people are talking shit about my skating. And he's like, I know you're a better skater. I tell them you're a better skater, but they think you're shit, basically. The way he said it. And I remember Do you just, think he like needed, like why would, he didn't, he didn't need say to tell that. You. And I was <laughs> definitely like. Like did he need to I tell felt, you that? <laughs> yeah, I felt really attacked and like just like uh, really shut me down. It was mm -hmm. really fucking mm -hmm. shitty. To hear that. <laughs> I mean, of course. You know, but, how do but you... it was actually, you know, it helped feed the, like, you got to fucking actually try this and, like, work. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. How did you, after hearing that, like, it must have fueled the fire or something? There was that and then being a dad. Mm -hmm. So it was, like, 21 when she was pregnant, 22 when she was born. And then, like, I was just, like, I just had this thing where I have to work. So I was just like, I have to try. But what did you really change, though? Like, the way you, like... I wouldn't just go skating. Mm. I would, like, get a trick. So you're, like, thinking of... You're thinking, envisioning a skate part, and you're like, this is what I... No, like, kind of what I, I want. I always tried to do that, but it didn't work. But mm. I knew... I wasn't just going to go see what happened downtown. I was like, I'm going to go to 
a spot and maybe try this and yeah. Mm -hmm. And like stack clips, mm -hmm. which I which I don't know if that is how people do it anymore these days. It's a different world, but that's like that's what you had to do. And yeah. I didn't know that. So and that helped. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Kind of thinking about it in a more structured way and yeah. like and then like I'm scared, <clears throat> but I'm still gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. Because I was doing big rails at the time, so I was like, yeah. It was just sort of like I'm gonna put my head down and fucking skate. I remember. I that. always skated, but it was like I'm gonna mm -hmm. film it. Yeah. The big rail period was like intense. Yeah, that bummed <laughs> a lot of people out. <laughs> yeah. For me, it was like something that came pretty naturally, so yeah. I just did it. I wasn't like trying to be the best at it, but it was just like I actually had fun. Yeah. Like it was fun to skate big rails. I remember that Alex Chalmers guy was just fucking... Was that his name? Chalmers, yeah. Yeah, he was fucking going nuts. He, he was, like, skating, like, the biggest, real, like, massive... No, rail. that's Paul Macnow. Paul Macnow, yeah. you're right, you're right. Paul Chalmers Macnow. was, like, the bull skater. <laughs> yeah, Paul street, Macnow. Part, like, yeah, Chalmers was, like, fucking insane ATV. Yeah. Like, but Macnow, he did the yeah. gnarly big rails. He's probably the same as me, where it was, like, kind of fun to do. Mm -hmm. But I remember, like, people in my... In the industry just being, like, this fucking sucks. Like, mm -hmm. Like I, that's shitty. Like I can I don't want to do that. Like I don't skate rails. Yeah, I don't want yeah. to. <laughs> I'm like they're fun. You should try it. <laughs> it definitely takes a certain type of person to like be able to do that. Yeah, you know? I almost feel like tranny helped like coping. Mm -hmm. No, it makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like five O's on in the mini ramp all day. Like is a five O on a hand ramp. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. But there's like a little less. Yeah. Yeah. So of like Danny Way, Tony Hawk, Mike Carroll. Who's the most nerve-wracking to be around in the beginning? <laughs> of all those people? <laughs> I mean, you got these three legendary skaters, and you're coming in. I guess by the time you get to Mike Carroll, you're pretty established. Yeah. <laughs> if Mike's funny. Because <laughs> he's an enigma that's like, he has this persona that just is not who he is. <laughs> but anyway, uh, fuck, who would be the hardest nerve-wracking person to be around? I don't know. Danny Way seems like an intense guy also. Yeah, well, he's also, he was really sweet to me. Mm -hmm. Like, he, like, put, took me under his wing, and, like, when Plan B went out of business the, that, for that hiatus time or whatever, I was like, I need to go somewhere where I'm not going to lose my job again and mm -hmm. my, my daughter. And I was, told him, I was like, I think I'd like to try to get on Birdhouse. Mm -hmm. And he did it. He got me on Birdhouse. That's amazing. Which is crazy. And then he actually got me on S, too, because mm -hmm. they wanted me to ride for Etnies, I think, after Sheep went out of business. And he was like, fuck that. You're not riding for Etnies. <laughs> 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 yeah, he was always really, like, he, he was, like, a, yeah, he took care of me. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to remember who was, like, intimidating. I don't know. I can't remember right yeah. now. Like, even if they were nice, it's just, like, being around those three legendary dudes. Yeah. It's like, these guys are the fucking. Yeah, for sure. You know. I barely saw Tony. Yeah. When I was on, I was on Birdhouse for a blip, and yeah. he wasn't around when I was like out skating with like Heath and Jeremy. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I feel like Rick Howard was like I was I was nervous around him a lot because I knew like it was up to him for me to get on Girl or whatever, and mm -hmm. I knew he had some weird thoughts about it <laughs> like there's I think I don't know who did it like some people pressured him enough like Eric I think and Colin again was on girl at the time mm. so but well, yeah. it worked out yeah and then like Rick and I are like best yeah, friends you guys are like best yeah. buddies now, it's huh? the best <laughs> it's so funny to think that but still like he came to my hometown Ottawa on a tour just a few years ago and I was like he was skating my curb and I was tripping like I don't fan out you know but I was just like I just like snuck a photo. Wait, when did this happen? It was like five years ago or something. Oh, okay. I don't know, or something. It was like a Lakai Canada trip. Mm -hmm. And like, so like, they're in my hometown. And just seeing Rick skate those ledges, that was like. Like the curves that you grew up skating? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The archives. Yeah. It was the spot. And like, that's when like the girl videos and the Plan B videos that he was putting out at the time were, you know. Yeah. I was skating there, so I was just like, this is trippy. <laughs> Why am I here with these people? What the you still have imposter syndrome to this day. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I have that at my job. <laughs> yeah. You know. I think, you know, I, I, I don't know who I was talking to, but I said this the other day, but just like, we're all faking it. Like, you like, in a way. 
then you become it, you know. I guess it's just kind of like a sense of, 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 hum, of being humble or humility, mm -hmm. is that, you know. It's the other the people in the, around you that validate you, and then um, when that happens, then you're like, okay, cool. Yeah. Your Wikipedia said that you're a teetotaler. Is, yeah. that, is that something that you call yourself? No. <laughs> I just, I like that. I think that term's awesome, though. I wonder, I was like, why does it say that? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like a British term, I think. Mm -hmm. It just means I don't drink alcohol. <laughs> yeah, it's like some old school, like, fucking yeah. medieval. Yeah, They're like I'm a seamstress. And I, got, I never got married or whatever. Spin, spinster? Spinster, yeah. I can only imagine all the money you've saved over the years from, like, not... <laughs> I saved money like, and I invested it. <laughs> yeah. why, why is that? Like, how come you never drank? Or um, I never knew why. I was always afraid of it. Mm -hmm. Like, it was always like, I just don't want anything to do with that. My friends started getting into it. I just wanted to skate. And I would like, they would just like drink in a spot and I would go to another spot. Like, mm -hmm. cause, and the, but then it's, in the end, it's like my dad was a, a, an abusive alcoholic and pretty heavy one. Mm -hmm. So we actually just like, in the middle of the night, left, you know, like, from him. So I, it was just because of that. But consciously, I wasn't like, yeah. oh, my dad did all this stuff, so I'm not gonna drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then at the when I was like probably like 16, 17, all my friends were doing it a lot, and I was just. So you never got drunk ever, not once. No, I never no. took a sip. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's weird. It's kind of weird barrier life, I believe. Yeah. But. I got to a point when I was like 30, and I was like, well, why even start? Like, it's not gonna Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Start so I can quit later because I did too much or something. Because Kenny, Kenny Anderson started drinking, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, he did. That was like a trip for me. Yeah, because yeah, he, he, he was like me. Mm -hmm. And he had friends in Vegas that were like that. Yeah. And then he just went through a life transition where he's like, no more fucking barriers, you know? I'm just yeah. going to try things. And, and I get that. Mm -hmm. I respect it. So he had wine at dinner, and then I hear him cracking beers in the back of the van, mm -hmm. and just like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> we lost him. <laughs> <laughs> you lost your edge, bro. <laughs> yeah. But like, it must, as like somebody who's never drank, or is it hard to see skaters like ruining, some skaters ruining their careers, or like putting themselves in like difficult situations because of alcohol? It must be like, I don't know. Must... I don't see it as like a ruining your career thing. I just see it as like you're making your life harder. Mm -hmm. And you don't know it. I guess it's the same thing. You're not looking down the road. But yeah. like, I don't know. Like, because the people in the skate industry, they kind of, they go pretty heavy. Like, yeah. the, the dudes that work in, that's working at like Foot Locker isn't going as heavy as like the dude in the van. No, And like all. these kids are like starting this at 18, like, Always drunk. Yeah, always drunk. So it's like that's that's what you're used to now, mm -hmm. and that's like it's it's been known to be an addictive thing. <laughs> totally. No, but I mean, I always I talk about it a lot because it's like it's like you're a professional athlete, but like at the same time you're supposed to go out and drink every night and like get yeah. fucked up and like drink in the van and drink a twelve pack. That's like, almost all I ever see though. It's yeah. just like you're in the back of a IG or you're in the back of a Safeway or something. <laughs> like fucking getting hammered, like that's it. But I also get it because it's fucking boring. Mm -hmm. Like you're there in the past in our my time when we did like generators and all that shit. It was like you're behind a Safeway until fucking four in the morning for a month. Yeah. <laughs> Ty Evans. And, and, or whatever. No, not even Ty, but just other, no. like that's just how it was then. Yeah, for sure. And in, like in my circle. Mm -hmm. So it was like it's fucking boring and it's a 10 hour drive coming up. I get it, but. Yeah, and there was like no phone to look at. Well, honestly, I'm more <laughs> bummed at the phone. Than yeah, that was when like I lost my friends in the van. <laughs> like, it's real quiet. In it here. was like <laughs> fucking twenty questions with Mesa the whole drive. Like name this scooter, like fun games, and yeah. like it was fun. It was like the group and people rolled dice, and then it was just like headphones, and yeah. But I think now it kind of came back. People mm -hmm. were a little more lively in the van. <laughs> Yeah. Not that I go in those very much. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, around like Minik Mahdi time and all that, like those were amazing videos. But it seemed like skateboarding at that time was like super serious. Like that was a really serious video. Like it was like yes. it was just like hardcore. Like you know, 
Like I, I, I look at the way skateboarding now is now, and it's like more like dorking oh. around, yeah. doing like funny tricks on curbs and yeah. like stuff like that. It's like completely flipped. I think a lot of it has to do with Instagram. Partly, like, yeah. Because yeah. it's kind of started with like doing hard dork around tricks, and now it's like kind of like the thing to yeah. do. Yeah, and just like playing around with your friends. Mm -hmm. and I think like not even medic Madi, but I the way I saw it was like pretty sweet, kind of broke the camel's back. Mm -hmm. And people are like, fuck HD, fuck like hyper everything, like we're just going to go blurry and fun. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And I don't know if it's true, but this, I'm just like insular in my world. And I was like, yeah. I think it was around that video that people yeah. were just like, never again. Yeah, things don't need to be this serious. Yeah, like, yeah it was really serious. Like I don't, it's just not why I skate. Mm -hmm. But... Not that the skating in the video wasn't amazing. It's oh, like, of yeah, course, it's just, no. Not taking away from that And I think the video was amazing, too. It's just like the, the culture was just kind of like, we're, we're changing it. Yeah. And skateboarding is owned by the youth, and they're just like, it's not our shit, we're doing this. And yeah. then, you know, we're old. <laughs> <laughs> we're the old guys now. Yeah, even though like they, this was like the time when the first time in skating when stuff got recycled. Mm -hmm. Like 90s came in. It wasn't like, oh, we're, we're like being the 70s skaters. That's true. And then for me, I was like, fuck that. Like, we were always innovating, doing new shit. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then it's like, oh, now we're going to kind of copy this scene. It wasn't copied, but it was like inspired by. But yeah. I, I was a little, it took me like a good year to get used to it. Yeah. Because of our world of serious skating. <laughs> and, but Even if it wasn't really serious it was just put out. That's the way it's presented to the world. Yeah, you know? it was really high level intense. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck yeah, really intense. Yeah. Like, think Jeff Rowley. Like, yeah, exactly. That's how we kind of, like, a lot of us were like, you know, it was just like fucking doing this. Yeah. And then that shift happened. And yeah, like I said, it took me a year to get used to it, but then I was like, oh, this is rad. Yeah. yeah. Start skating with people like that. You're like, oh, I get it. Yeah. And it's like, in the beginning, I thought people were like, these dudes are pro for doing front shoves all day. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> and then it's sort of and like... for like cruising around. Yeah, and like, <laughs> yeah, like it's like the local skate shop kid is the pro now. <laughs> but, because then I was from a serious pro. So <laughs> like, we, yeah, we're serious. Mm -hmm. But then the cream rises to the top and it's sort of like... Sure. It's that kind of skating, but it's like, these guys are actually special at mm -hmm. it. And yeah. Yeah. No. I don't want to offend anybody, but that's just my opinion from what I saw. Like, oh, I, totally. we've been doing it for, like, fucking decades. Like, the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, speaking of that, how long have you been on Girl now? It's been, like... Oh, uh, I don't know, 20 years? Damn. Yeah, something like that. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. It is. It's very unique and special and, yeah. And it's crazy because I see the new video, the new Girl videos, like, you have two new pros. You have Manchild. You got Simon. Simon yeah. And you're right there with them, though. Like yeah. you're hanging with them. Like. Yeah, because we're friends. <laughs> That's how. It no, works. but like yeah. skating wise, oh, like yeah. you're like you know like yeah. you're going on trips and like you yeah. guys are like skate and like even with like a 20 year. I don't know how much older you are than them, but probably like yeah, 15, 20 years. Simon's as old as my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're yeah. you're hanging with the young guns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I will fucking love skating. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I, if I was more like physically healthy, I'd be doing it as much as they are. Mm -hmm. but I've been battling this ankle thing for a long time and. Just it gets pretty good, and then I hurt it, and it gets pretty good. Yeah. It. But yeah, I just I just love it, and I want to be in the mix with those dudes. For sure. So. That's do you do anything it. like outside of skating to like stay in shape, like Pilates or yoga? No, I used to do a ton of yoga. I, I was saying this to my brother. I was like, I like got into yoga way too early. <laughs> like I was twenty. <laughs> you were like, like over it already. Yeah, and now I'm like, when I actually need to stretch, I'm not doing it. But yeah. um, no, I just kind of like got really into surfing, and that like got me kind of feeling a little healthier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure the no booze thing helps too. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I drink a lot of water. Yeah. It's super good. It's like me. I don't drink a lot of flavored drinks either. I just like water. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And you and Tony Hawk are now teammates again. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Birdman. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys been on any trips together? No. No, I just missed one. They were in Brazil. I couldn't go. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's rad. It's so sick, like Tony Hawk and Riley Hawk. It's amazing. Like on tour. <laughs> that's sick. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. I'm such a fan of Tony Hawk. Yeah, he's a legend. And just like, what, I think he's 50 now. And he's 
fucking bus. He is 50, he right? Rips. I mean, what did he do on his 50th birthday? He did like a McTwist or something? Or was it like, like 50 a 900 tricks? something? Did he, he, did some, uh, yeah. he did something, like. Yeah. I, don't know. I like that. <laughs> Spencer Hamilton just turned 30. He did 30 tricks for 30. Oh, he did? Down like a seven stair or something or eight stair. That kid's good, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of him, like, do, do you ever go to the dime competitions? No, I haven't been yet. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. I just. Maybe I wasn't invited or I just was doing something else, but I'd, I'd love to go. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of that. For sure. Yeah. I was going to say, like, you must, there must be, like, a sense of pride for those dudes kind of, like, coming out of, out of Montreal. Yeah, Montreal, like, yeah. It's really it. unique for, like, a Canadian scene to be yeah. internationally cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I go to boutiques in, like, Europe that aren't even skateboard boutiques, and there's, like, dime sweatshirts in there, yeah. you know, like, fashions. <laughs> it's rad. It's, it's like amazing. trend shit. But yeah. Yeah. And again, it's like, you gotta, hopefully you have a longer-term plan if you want to keep it going, because mm -hmm. it's kind of like, we'll see. Trends are hard to hold. Yeah. Yeah. That's why that girl thing's so unique, you know? Yeah, like, for sure. They did so well for so long, it was like... I mean, they great. did the best that you could do in a... Skateboard. For so long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, even if it's like not as what it once was, but like that's just the natural cycle yeah. of things. But they're still there and they're, they're lame still there, and doing yeah. their thing. Yeah. Exactly. And like the new dudes are doing ratchet. I don't know. Mm -hmm. that, it's great. Yeah. I think you're a pretty smart dude. Like, and I think a lot of skaters are not that smart. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever find it tough to like, like, for example, Jay-Z said that he has to dumb down his music to, like, make people, like, kind of, like, understand where right. he's coming from. Like, when you're in the tour van, do you ever feel like you have to, like, dumb yourself down to, like... Mm, some, well, no, it's kind of fun because, like, some of the kids are just, you know, they're, like, unexperienced in some stuff I'm dealing with. And so it's, like, it's kind of fun to educate them a bit. Yeah. But I don't dumb it down. I actually turn it up a bit sometimes just to fuck with them. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is rad. Whoa. What? <laughs> be like, Greg, that's that shit you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. That it's sounds fun. like fun, actually. <laughs> yeah, it is fun. But everybody's just as smart as everybody. Sure. You know? It's just, um, it's. Yeah, I mean, everybody has their different strengths and weaknesses. Intelligence isn't education. Mm -hmm. They're totally different things. Totally. So, like, for sure. Yeah. I'm, I've dropped out of like the ninth, tenth grade or something. Yeah. But it's all about like what your interests are also. Like, yeah. You have to be interested in things to like learn about new yeah. stuff. So I think that was like I know I'm, I was talking to somebody the other day and it was like uh I don't just consider myself a skater, like I got I have other interests and stuff. You know what I mean? Like Yeah, for sure. And like I I remember saying thinking that like years and years ago, like I don't wanna just think about skating. I wanna mm -hmm. like try new things. And uh so I had other friends that did other shit, so you just learn from other people, I guess. I mean, that's clear, like, with everything that you've done. Yeah. You know. Or whatever, like, yeah. documentary stuff or, like, business stuff or yeah. whatever. Just, I don't know. What's going on with Abandoned? Uh, we're, for, like, TV show stuff, yeah. we're, like, hiatusville right now. Mm -hmm. um, we had some ideas of developing new things. We get kind of, I don't know, we kind of get bored. We kind of do, like, one-and-done projects. Yeah. So we did Abandoned, then we did Post Radical, and then now, like, I don't know. Like, the network wants more Abandoned, so we're talking about it. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but Post Radical is kind of, like, more what you, your original idea was from the beginning, right? Um, no. No? No. Nope. Oh, okay. We didn't really have an original idea. Mm -hmm. It was sort of, the, like, Viceland that kind of had a loose concept that was based on something our director did, mm -hmm. where they took over this abandoned hotel and built all these par uh, obstacles in it for like a Red Bull project. Mm -hmm. And people flew there in Nova Scotia and like filmed in there. So it was like, this guy that helped them produce that ended up working for Viceland. And then somebody at Viceland said something about abandoned malls. Like yeah. he had driven by one. And he actually doesn't remember saying this, that guy. Mm -hmm. And he's like, we're gonna do something about these abandoned malls. And then, um, that producer guy was like, they had already talked about developing like a web series of them going to different abandoned places and skating them. So what we did was we took that idea and we made it more socioeconomic driven and like way less skating. Yeah. The network wanted to be like, more we're skating. ripping in the mall. 
And and we were just we we're just like, we just don't want to do that. <laughs> you like there's broken glass. There's like, yeah, fucking... and it's just like I don't know. It was not interesting. Yeah, to me. And like those shits moldy. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's really I mean, fucking it's nasty, unhealthy. Yeah. But, but post rad um, post radical, right? Post radical. That seems more like uh, kind of just more educate. It's kind of like Anthony Bourdain ish. Yeah. So kinda that like... was. That came from the idea that skateboarding is normal now. Mm -hmm. you, like you skate with your mom, mm -hmm. and like, so that means it's it's not radical. It's post radical. Okay. So then we were just looking for the different stuff in skating. So we went to like subcultures of skateboarding. Yeah. You know. And the fingerboarding was a little interesting. <laughs> it was, I fucking loved it. It was so cool. I really thought that guy Martin, he was really interesting. <laughs> and so passionate about it just as we are about like yeah. skating. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, and I was I was really uh, psyched on the freestyle competition. Oh too. my god, yeah. <laughs> that was so hard. Nerve wracking. It looked a little nervous. Yeah, you and were kind of rattled. I had been skating a lot at that time. So it was like, and it's flat ground, so I was yeah. like, this is bad, just on blast. <laughs> but it was it was interesting. It was fun. Yeah. Your first run was like my first my last run at Slam City Jam. Yeah, just, <laughs> just bail everything. Yeah, but then you you came through on the on the next the second day. Yeah, yeah, I came, I landed some shit. Yeah, yeah, that was so fun. That was easy too. That was shot. That was that contest was in Vancouver, so we just stayed uh, home. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's cool. But yeah, that post radical was. I think we were just like, let's just do a skate show now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do people come up to you and like say hey, like that don't skate and from abandoned all the yeah. time? Yeah. It was like a lot of like moms like that show. Like oh, yeah. you know, a lot of fucking um, people in the Midwest and like places that we went really appreciated that show. They're like, you're telling you're, our story yeah. as it is. This is amazing. And like on Twitter, I get like messages a lot, and it's like a lot of like Trump supporters that are like really, really into me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's like <laughs> half the people I interviewed were Trump supporters and they're actually really decent humans. They're just in like a different of course. Uh, cult that we're in. Yeah, but, I mean, they're in their own bubble. We're it's in bubbles. our bubble, yeah. yeah. And like they do have, <clears throat> that part of the country is forgotten. Like the infrastructure is gone. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. But I mean, so that show I get, I, I got a lot of people reaching out to me that were just like, and like moms and stuff and like people in their 50s and 60s. This lady, Linda Osborne from Ohio, she sent me this really beautiful letter. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I, I uh, started skateboarding because of you. Really? Yeah. And she's, so she's like 65. She used to be a trucker. And she lives in Ohio and she's like kind of rolls down her street and stuff. And then so I mailed her like a board and another letter and stuff, and we've been pen pals ever since. That's amazing. Yeah. She just got was part of getting this new skate park built in her town. Like she immersed herself in the community. She yeah. was that inspired. Yeah, she's so cool. Damn, that's super. Yeah, cool. I haven't met her yet. I can't wait to go out there. That must feel really rewarding to like put like your project out there and to have it touch people like that. Yeah, I got so many messages of people like that really meant something. That's Damn. really cool. That's super yeah. cool. So. And then we did Post Radical, and it was like a little less of that. It was more like, that was cool. <laughs> it wasn't as like, like touchy-feely. Yeah. That's interesting. I, I, I would think it would be the other way around, because Post Radical is like you're going to like Ethiopia. Yeah. You're, you're kind of like showcasing these areas. But I guess um, maybe Abandon is like a little more close to home. Yeah. That's There's a bigger mm, demographic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, so it's like, you know, the fingerboarders were really stoked on the fingerboarding episode. Yeah. But there's just not a whole lot of fingerboarders. <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean, there were. <laughs> when there, before the recession, there was a lot of fingerboarders. <laughs> I guess you can't just sit around the house all day fucking fingerboarding. You got to go out and like... <laughs> I thought it was cool. I wish I could. I'm not good at it. Like, I, I didn't develop the skills. I guess I could, but it was cool going to those like crazy fingerboard skate parks. Did the fingerboard guy actually skate as well? Yeah, Rips. Oh, okay. He has a rad bull at his Oh, yeah, house. that's right. He had the yeah. bull in, the, in his yeah, house. Yeah, Martin. Yeah. They all skate. Yeah. Yeah. Like, everybody skates. Mm -hmm. With everything that you've done with all your traveling for your TV shows, like for Abandon, and, you know, just in general, it seems like you meet a lot of people that are outside of your specific bubble. Mm -hmm. And, like, even living in Vancouver and living in Canada, it's mm -hmm. like... How do you guys see what's going on in the States? Like, 
Um, well, I have a different view than the Canadians because I've mm. come here so much. But yeah. um, like politically and all that, it's like it's really strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for for me, I I like. A lot of people in Canada talk shit about the states because mm -hmm. it's like we're different and like we do things differently, and so they're just like they just make jokes about it. But I, I see as America as a place I love. Like I love people here and things that happen here. But there's also like this politically, there's a lot of really strange things happening. And um, so going to these places that are like Trump's base, mm -hmm. like I understand why they feel so angry and anti-establishment, because they literally have been forgotten. The industry's been taken away, and nothing's changed. Mm -hmm. And their towns are dying. But they and don't know who to direct that anger. No, they're, yeah, they're, they're just angry. And then so the, the right and the left, the one side is like using that anger mm -hmm. and saying, yeah, you should be pissed. This is like, these people did it to you, or this is that. No one wants to do anything for you but us. And then. Um, it's, it's really hard for me, knowing a bit about how some things work, to see like the stuff they're promoting to fix the troubled areas working. Mm -hmm. You know, like bringing back coal. Like, yeah. Um, but it, all it is is people being used for political gain. Sure. And they're not they, necessarily aware. In of one it. way, they're stoked because they they feel like they have a voice. And they see Trump as this anti-establishment person that's going to throw a monkey wrench in the thing, and it'll grow better. But I don't know. I don't. I don't see that. Yeah. But and I see him probably getting elected again. I see him getting elected again. Also. Yeah, because I don't know what's happening on the other side of the spectrum. And again, I'm not in this game. Yeah. But like, it's just like there's a lot of confusion on both sides, and I think the the Republican side are are better chess players. Like, cause they, they're more manipulative. They, and they're they, more, they don't mind cheating. Yeah, and they they, you know what I mean. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. So it's they just do all the shit, and and we're the people that are left leaning are kind of like, well, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> so I don't know. It's um, people in Canada are really bummed. Mm -hmm. It's like really dark, and there's a lot of hatred and towards us. No, there's a lot of hatred here between every faction. Oh yeah. Like your panel, people were angry and so you know. I mean, like there's yeah. just, like people are angry in their own groups. Sure. So it's just being fed on, and people just need to get through that. I don't know. I wouldn't. I don't even know who I would support out here. You know. And honestly, we had a, a, a conservative prime minister, our president, mm -hmm. for so many years, and he was probably left of Obama. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like we're from a whole other bubble. Yeah. yeah. So. I see, like, not, I don't, not to get too deep into it, but, mm -hmm. like, Americans are, like, two people are screaming at each other on the street that nobody, that one's saying, you're not listening to me, and then yeah. the other one's saying, you're not listening to me, and then they're, instead of, like, no being ground. quiet and, like, coming to an understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And, not and that's what it is, ground. you know? It's just, like... Both sides are feeding that yeah, kind of, Yeah, both sides, <laughs> exactly. From what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. but you go in the streets, and I'm, say, a lefty liberal guy... I'm like hugging Trump supporters that are very friendly with me and I'm friendly with them. I actually think they're great people. So it's just like these um, loudspeakers that are causing it. And then actually when people get together, it's like, oh, like, yeah, we're good. <laughs> and, you, well, you, and you obviously have more of an understanding of the way things work and through, just through life experience as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. And you have empathy and, you Excuse know. Me. Yeah, but. yeah, for sure. And people, when you show empathy, they feel it. They're they even just, feel weird about it. At, like, yeah. Sometimes they're like, whoa. Yeah. Or <laughs> compassion. Like, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's two ways. So, like, some, this guy, Paul Bloom, says, like, empathy is not a good thing because empathy means, like, if someone's bummed, you get bummed. Mm -hmm. for, and you show them you're bummed. But compassion is more like you feel for them, but you, you're proactive in helping them. Mm -hmm. So it's like you just try to, like, keep a bit of a distance and help. Yeah. <laughs> just help people. Yeah. But I don't know, it's, it's a weird, it's just politics, it's always been fucked up, but it just seems really gross right now. And it's not just here, like yeah. all over the world, there's some weird shit going on. I and think I, it's just, I think it's like older generations that are dying and are just clinging on to their, to their beliefs, you know? Yeah. And 
essentially, like, that's what I see in, like, layman, you know, kind of, like, simple terms of, like, what's going on in the UK and, like... You, yeah. And, like, oh, yeah. you know. And uh, they were just manipulated. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to get a good deal in the end. They're just, yeah, yeah from what I can tell. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's just, it's just all... It's, like, the left manipulates, the right manipulates. It's just, yeah. like, stoke up, like the way the language is used and stuff, but whatever. I think just people should try to get into the middle and hang out. Yeah, for it's, sure. It's like the school dance, like the, <laughs> the guys and the girls over here, and they all want to hang out, but they won't. And then the cool kids get to dance and dance. Yeah. There must be some kind of relief, though, being a Canadian, knowing that you can leave this. Yeah, my, my ex is from here, and she's, yeah, she's getting her passport. She's, she's, she's just, like, I'm expediating it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it sucks. Like, she, yeah. But well, if shit goes down, I'm coming to your crib, man. Yeah, come hang. Yeah, come hang. And more than welcome. Everybody's welcome. And then, yeah. That's what's up. Shit's not going down. Yeah. It'll come back. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> so is post-radical coming back or? Uh, no. Everything's on hiatus right Honestly, now? you know, we went to Pushing Borders, that yeah. conference. And while I was there, I was like, we can make an entire season from this event. Mm -hmm. like, go visit these people with what they're doing, and it'll be actually really good. I was like, fuck, I wish we came here and then did Post Radical because there's That's true. a lot of really Even things. with the skate school and everything? like Well, we did that in Post Radical. You did do that? Yeah, I we went to Brigariots for that. Oh, okay. um, but just like the things people are doing mm -hmm. with skating and, and yeah, the academic side of it is really interesting. Yeah. And antisocial still going? Yeah, strong. going strong. Yeah, it's great. How involved Seven, are you in 17 that? 17 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Shit blows my mind, like, 17 years, all ages venue, art gallery, like people grew up in our scene kind of thing. And yeah. I just realized that the other day. I was like, holy fuck. We made, like, made a, did something for our town. Yeah, for sure. And me, as far as I am involved, like not very much really, mm -hmm. like for like day to day stuff. Mm -hmm. I just hang out there a lot. And then Michelle Pizzell, my partner, she's just like, that's her thing. Yeah, that's her she thing. She does the shop. She does like, like, all the events in this town, pretty much. Not all of them, but... And then, like, get skate parks built, and now she started a flower company. Like, she started a farm, like, an hour out of town where she grows her own flowers with her partner, Atlanta, and then they bring them into town and sell them and Fuck, stuff. man, you guys are inspiring, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's her. It I makes mean, me shock. <laughs> she literally, like... But, I mean, you guys are all doing so yeah. many things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just do what you're into. Yeah, you're yeah. doing it right now. I guess you're, I guess yeah. you're What's right. What's up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Fuck that's it. amazing. Did you guys did did antisocial get ever get caught up in the uh, whole streetwear like Nike phase of kids we sleeping outside never... and all that? Oh, stuff? like with our gear? like Nike SB and all that. No, we never sold Nike. Oh, okay. We never sold um, sports companies. Oh, okay. Which is, I mean, it just made sense to us at mm -hmm. the time. I think we had a couple. Like I think we had like a um, polar. Converse shoe, maybe uh, like we like supported that, but mm -hmm. like no, we never we never went that route. We just stayed skate and mm -hmm. our scene. Like in the very beginning, we were like really into the small brands. It was like the big brand era, you know, yeah, yeah right, and all that stuff. But like we got like Unabomber boards in from England and like yeah. tried to get stuff we were into. We didn't want like the way we looked at it. We didn't want the industry to dictate what we sold. We wanted to. Mm -hmm. Dictate what we were into. You know, show the kids what oh, we amazing. thought was cool. It must be hard with shoe companies now, though, because those guys are like so have kind of like the big brands are kind of taking over everything. Yeah, and we're losing brands. Like we just lost Huff; they shut down Huff. So, when we're just like, what are we gonna put yeah. on the wall? And now we're talking about maybe it's time for sports shoes companies. Like, well, yeah. what else is it gonna be? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. we're just we're trying to figure it out, but um, yeah. I mean, if you could survive without them, then, I mean... Yeah, we did probably, fine. Yeah. We never ma made money. Like, mm -hmm. we just stayed open, and, and it was never about money. It's just a community thing. Yeah. Really. It's almost like a non-for-profit. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, I, I mean, it's fine, because, like, I, for a while, I was like, fuck, I need this, comp this business to make me money. I've invested a lot in it initially. Was that the original idea, like, in building something for the future? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then... Now I'm like, because I did the shop, my career was expanded. Like, companies would want to work with me more because I'm involved in the shop. So that, it came back that way. 
Yeah. Not through actually dollars coming in the door. Mm -hmm. But then it came back and like it built my life around the shop and the people involved and mm -hmm. like now like third generation of like crew coming sure. through our shop. Yeah, it's like when you create something you don't you can't envision that it's gonna open a lot of doors but not the doors that you think that Yeah. Like, yeah. There's yeah. gonna be a random opportunities that come to you. Yeah. Through that. Exactly. And Michelle's yeah. always been like <clears throat> allergic to money. Yeah. She had that like consolidated skateboard, stay pure, stay poor sticker in her car. And I'm like coming stay from poor, welfare and I was like, that is not fucking cool, dude. <laughs> like you don't know poverty and that's not cool. <laughs> it sucks. Get paid, feed your family. Yeah. But, um, so she was always like, I, she just does not want it. She doesn't feel comfortable making money, which is mm -hmm. in a way really rad because that's she's not doing it for money. Mm -hmm. It's just community. And she does everything. You got to do it a little bit for money. Yeah, and that's what I keep telling her. And everybody's like, you got to put your shirts online. Like, we yeah. don't have a web store. Yeah. Like, and then, and then that antisocial social club thing happened, and they kind of took our shit and started oh, yeah, making millions. Yeah, that stupid fucking... Uh, it's that, like a streetwear that thing. That streetwear thing. Yeah. yeah, that was kind of lame. Yeah. Did you guys ever have any, like, mm. anything with them? Like, did you cease and desist? or No. Like, I don't know what happened with that. We're not like litigious and all that. Yeah. We're just like, I, I saw it like whatever, this is in the internet, I'm gonna get in trouble. I just saw it as a flash in the pan thing that was just gonna disappear. Mm -hmm. and I think they got in trouble with like bumming people out with like deliveries and stuff, I don't know. But we, saw that on Hypebeast. people would come in to the shop wearing it and look, they thought, everybody thinks it's us. Mm -hmm. So we'd just be like, no, that is not us. So. And Michelle would get bitter about it some days and she'd be like, you can't wear that in here. <laughs> like in the early days, she like you can't wear that. Dish. You're, I'm sorry, you gotta go somewhere else. That's she great was, for those Yelp reviews. Yeah, and that dude that started it for sure knows our shop. Yeah. So it was like, we were like, fuck that. And mm. then some people did some collabs with them, and we're like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, in the end, it didn't doesn't matter. It's just a blip. Mm -hmm. it didn't affect us at all. Yeah. And we're not looking to, like, I was, like, for a while, like, we got to, like, sell shit. <laughs> <laughs> and now I actually don't care. I just think we just need to stay open and do community shit, which mm -hmm. is cool. Like, so it's good to come around and be like, okay, well, you were right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but still, yeah, we should pay the That's rent. Cool. We should pay the rent this month. For sure. So how, how old is your daughter now? Is she... She's 21. She yeah. skate at all? She actually yeah, got into it the last couple years, mm -hmm. which, is, which is rad. And it's part of that new wave of like female skating. Mm -hmm. um, she was just like, oh, rad. Like, yeah. my friends are doing this thing and I'm really into it. And she was just never, I would never have pushed it on her at yeah. all. And well, she, no, it's she would like, better like that. We would go to the skate park and she would go to the playground. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, uh, but yeah, she's, she's all super into it now. And like, is she living in Vancouver? Or? Yeah. Yeah. She lives like six blocks away from me. Yeah. Pretty, I'm, I'm really super close. jealous of like all my like now that I'm in my late 30s early mm -hmm. 40s yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm in the pocket now I'm in the pocket somewhere around there <laughs> I'm super jealous of like all my friends that had kids at like 20 yeah because it's like done already it and was, that <laughs> well there's two two ways to look at it it was like I think for me it was perfect because mm -hmm. like I had money when she was born from skating, so like that helps. Mm -hmm. If you're 20 and you have a kid and you're broke, it's fucking shit. Yeah, it's sucks. But um, but you also stress less. Yeah, but then you grow up and then like we're we're, we're really close, like we're best friends. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. And then the other thing that's maybe a negative part of it is like I'm like. 43 and I have empty nest syndrome like I feel lost because my kid moved out like <laughs> you know what I mean Interesting. like it's you don't weird. feel like what is it like that's like more of like a sense of purpose yeah of like what am I doing my whole life had meaning yeah and it was to take care of my daughter and then it's still there but it's yeah. like a little different now yeah and people in my age now are having but now kids. you're free now I'm free <laughs> and it's like eh, I, have ideas. <laughs> I have ideas it's funny too because everybody when like in our twenties that had kids was like stereotypically they were like all oh, my black friends like yeah. Jamil, Carl Watson, Pat Washington, like yeah. <laughs> Vin Sanchez. <laughs> so I don't know where I'm going with, but we're like we're like breaking the the, stere <laughs> yeah. the stereotypes here. <laughs> yeah, I had that. I had sex once. <laughs> 
<laughs> First try. <laughs> it's funny though because like now I'm free, you said, but I'm like I'm gonna go to Australia for three months, yeah. like next week or in a couple of weeks, because uh, my lady's out there and I just wanted I'm free I can do that, mm-hmm. and I'm like every day I'm like telling my daughter like please come. Mm-hmm. Like, I want you to come with me. Like, yeah. She's like, well, I don't know. I'm not making that much money right now. I'm like, I'll buy you a ticket. Please come. Please come. Yeah, like, I'll fly you out. <laughs> yeah, like, well, you'll love it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's talk about the, uh, we were in Sweden together last yeah. week. Yeah, yeah, Pushing borders. That was fun. Fucking incredible. It was a good time. Yeah. It was, like, really, so I didn't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. They invited me to go chair a panel so basically, it's a group discussion and with like skaters and academics. And my thing was about skateboarding and education. Yeah. Or, you were the moderator, right? Yeah, the chair. Mm-hmm. And it was basically, normally, I think it's somebody that's really involved in this project brings up the idea and they do it. But they kind of just asked me to come in and be involved. So because <clears throat> I had interviewed uh, two of the people in the panel before for Post Radical. Mm-hmm. So it kind of made sense. So, yeah, so I went and did this panel, and uh, I was, like, really nervous about it, but... You were super good, though. Was I? I was all right. right. Yeah. Yeah, was, you were, like, funny. Like, again, like, I felt like a phony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, like, you, I felt like you were super, like, you, even though you were nervous, you, like, took your time, and, yeah. like, you... I don't know. I told everybody I'm nervous. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that already, yeah. saying, like, I'm really nervous, that kind of makes you less nervous. Yeah, right? it helped. It did. And I was like, I'm going to look you all in the eye. Okay. And it was good. You got it, you got it out of the way on the first day. So yeah, it was the first, of... first uh, panel of the whole thing. So it was like, yeah, it was almost like not making the finals and just mm-hmm. having fun. And then you have fun for the rest of it. The... And then yeah. my panel was, like, on Friday. Yeah. So I had the whole week to, like, even though I'm having fun, yeah. I'm still thinking about, it, like, oh, shit, my yeah. panel's coming up. My panel's coming up. Yeah. But I was so impressed with that. Like, weird, like, skateboarding in academia and, like, looking at skateboarding in a lot of different ways and what it can do for different people and groups and mm-hmm. deep skating people and just, like, regular non-skater people. It was, like... I think it'll be on YouTube soon. I think it, people should actually really watch that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then the dudes that did it, they're, um, they are, I think it was six people. It was all volunteer. And I think they worked for like almost a whole year on making it. Mm-hmm. It was like a really My, cool event. Yeah, it was super cool. I mean, yeah. the guy was like so emotional when he gave the speech on the last day when he was talking about how difficult it was to set up. And yeah, like, Theo. Yeah. 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 yeah, he cried, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was, so yeah, I hope they can continue on. They, they, they'll need, like, funding yeah. to do it, but. My panel got a little spicy. I know, yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about it? I think it? some people got mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 and what happened? Uh, uh, well, I mean, we, we were asked the question, like, so what are your, on your platform? It was a skate media panel. Yeah. We were asked, like, on your platforms, what are you doing for, the LGBT and for women to showcase them. Yeah. And so a couple of people answered, like, uh, I think it was Arthur. He kind of got, he was from uh, Free Magazine. Free Skate. Free yeah. Skate. They kind of got into it a little bit. And then, so like, I was just already super nervous being there, you yeah. know? Yeah. And like, I haven't really done, the, done that before. Yeah. And so I answered the question, like, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> they were like, what are you doing for LGBT and women? I was like, nothing. <laughs> and, <laughs> and what I meant by that was that I don't know how it came out the yeah. first time, but what I meant by that was I meant to say, like, LGBT is accepted, um, women are accepted, everybody's in the room, but you still have to be doing cool things to be on to be sitting here sitting or to be love in a magazine or, right. you know. So that, that's what I thought that I was saying. I don't yeah. know how it came across. People might have thought differently. Yeah, I, th- I think, like, people didn't really understand it at first because I kind of described, like, the way I grew up, like, growing up in San Francisco and, like, my mom being a social worker and, like, the fact that, like, I used to come home for dinner and there would be, like, trans people in my house and yeah. I'm, like, 15, you know. And yeah. For me, like, I just want to normalize those things, you know, yeah. and not have it... I, I basically was saying, like, I'm not going to check check boxes and have, like, okay, I got the gay guy, the trans yeah. guy, the, 
You know, I, we, I've had um, Brian Anderson and Alexis Sablone on here, but they're on here because of like who they are, who they are, yeah. and the cool Merit. things, the cool things that you do. Yeah, who you sleep with at night or who you choose to spend your intimate time yeah. with, for me, is not really any of my concern. Right. You know. Yeah. So people didn't really take it that way. Uh, I think. You know, later on, I asked one of the... Because a lot of people understood what I said, and a yeah. lot of people came up to me, and they were like, well, I think it's a generational thing, uh -huh. you know? Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's happening. And, now. like, yeah, it's a generational thing where you're more laid back about it, and you're more kind of, like, accepting people for who they are, but, like, not necessarily angry or and I think because fighting of, that fight, you know? Or maybe because of your history with your mom and all that stuff, it's, this is normal for you already. Yeah, it's normal. So... Um, you're maybe a little already advanced where everything's like equal playing field mm -hmm. and it's all about the merit on the board, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, people maybe right now might not be there as far as you are or they haven't experienced that, that's for yeah. sure. There's a lot of doors that have been closed for people sure. probably. But I spoke um, to one of the um, women later on and I was like, how, what, like, what did people hear when I said that? And she said that the way it was perceived was as if I was saying like, all lives matter when people say black lives yeah. matter. Like as if I was saying like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, yeah, like it's like, I just love everybody and it's fine. Like, yeah. I, I don't really know, I don't really get it, but um, it kind of did bug me that like I was misunderstood, but at the same time, that's, I think it was good um, to be on a panel and like provoke. Have a discussion. Discussion. Yeah. And, I mean, maybe some people got something good out of it. A lot of people came up to me and they were like, dude, I love what you said, and like, that's oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, things get pushed to f f extremes on both sides, mm -hmm. and you just got to keep trying to tug it back to the middle and like get progress, but don't like, you don't want to burn that side or that side. You just exactly. Gotta, yeah. Try to just keep, again, like keep it equal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was like a great, it was a great time. I was super stoked to be there, and I, yeah. I felt like, you know, it was amazing to hear all these voices in skateboarding. I mean, again, like I'm in my bubble, like yeah. just like everybody else, you know. Yeah. I skate with my buddies in New York, my, you know, West Coast, Carol. Yeah. But yeah. like, it was nice to meet all these new people. Like, yeah, it was cool, especially being in Europe as well and having different voices from exactly out of the main bubble of America. Mm -hmm. And then I remember people in panels, they would talk about America a lot and then um, some of the chairs would have to like kind of be like can you explain that that's like an american thing <laughs> i was like i think this is an american problem like, yeah yeah mm -hmm. like we were talking about education and they were talking about schools here and it's like it's a way bigger problem for you ryan lay was talking about like how expensive school is like post-grad and stuff and mm -hmm. it's like well it's not in sweden you get paid to go to school so <laughs> yeah so like you can't really compare yeah. the two yeah but you can tell your story for sure mm -hmm. yeah but yeah, it was a really interesting panel. Uh, I mean, an interesting um, event, and it's good that things got spicy. Like, yeah. We don't want to just keep like. Exactly. You gotta spice it we're up. The we're the best. We're the best. <laughs> so that's what I said in my initial emails with them. I was like, I don't want to just talk about positive skating because it's boring. Because mm -hmm. it's not just positive skaters do shitty shit. Yeah. And I don't want to ignore that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I kind of tried to touch on also in the panel when we spoke about like. We talked about it earlier, the way in skateboarding that it that it's always that it's like yeah, party, party hard, and then like ah, skater die, and yeah. then people actually die, yeah, and then everybody, and then people are like, oh fuck, R.I.P. Fucking Instagram post, but it's like once when yeah. they're like partying and they're doing all that, nobody's saying anything. No, it's true, yeah, you know, yeah, it's good to like, and so John Rattray was there, and he was talking about mental health and suicide prevention, mm. and his whole thing was just be. Um, up front and just like, are you thinking about suicide? Not mm -hmm. like, uh, are you thinking of doing something funny? Yeah. Like that kind of thing. So it's like maybe bringing that kind of language into things more mm -hmm. where it's just don't dance around shit and just be mm -hmm. like, dude, you're, you're fucking up. Like, yeah. I'm worried about you. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think that could happen a lot more. For and sure. so people are like, whoa, you're worried about me? Like, yeah. that feels good. <laughs> no, totally. Yeah. Because it's like nobody ever says anything until it's like too late. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know these these topics are especially like sensitive for a lot of people, but it's like at the same time you got to confront them and like yeah, you know, say like, are you good? Like you're cool. That's the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. Just like the elephant in the room. Yeah. Exactly. 
But yeah, it was a good time. And yeah, like I said, you were great, man. No, I, guess, I guess that's why you're a TV. I enjoyed host. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like, I've done like Q and A before, mm -hmm. and I kind of enjoyed like the being on the stage. Yeah. I don't know. It's, oh, an, it's an adrenaline rush for sure. I guess, yeah. <laughs> this is different though. <laughs> it's just these guys behind here being quiet. <laughs> There's like <laughs> They're just laughing over there to yeah. themselves quietly. <laughs> well well besides everything else that you do, like skating, business, TV shows, like do you do anything artistically? You paint, draw, or I play like, a lot of music. Take, oh you do? Yeah. yeah. Um just like I have this room in my house that has like every instrument in it and I just kind of go, I do it alone mostly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I have like these looping pedals and just kind of zone out. That's nice. But I don't, I don't I've, I've always wanted to make like a project, but I haven't done it yet. Yeah. I had like these little snippets in my phone. There were like 200 like songs of like just fooling around. <laughs> I'm like, maybe one day I'll make a whole song, but it's been like 20 years of this song. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I do that a lot. And then I shot a lot of photos for a lot of years. I haven't done that lately. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of like, I haven't been doing a whole lot of creative shit right now other than just playing music. Yeah. Um, but I just, yeah, I've been thinking about that lately. I kind of want to. Mm -hmm. Expand that a bit. More creative outlets. My lady's a like a ceramicist, like potter, yeah. so I might try that out. Oh, nice. But I'm not like very drawn to it, but it, I wouldn't mind trying it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. And then skate wise, or what it, what project are you working on now? Like anything coming up or? No, um, I hurt my foot a few months ago, and that's almost better. I actually hurt my foot snowboarding, which is so lame. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've snowboarded since, as long as I've been skating, like yeah. since the 80s. <clears throat> and I never hurt my foot before snowboarding. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I was just like, it's been a long, slow, like when you hurt like the front of your foot, it just takes forever to heal. Yeah. So anyway, once that's better, like I said, I'm going to go to Australia for three months and I'm just going to, I'm hoping to like hook up with um, the people I met there last year and try to film some shit. For something, nice. I don't know. Just I just want to start filming tricks again because sure. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And what's going on in Australia? You've mentioned that a couple of times. Like, yeah, I met I met a lady there. I went with Keegan Sauter. I went in January mm -hmm. for, with him for on a surfing trip because he became a helicopter pilot and he's kind of working his way up in this this company and he's doing really shitty work. He's not even flying yet. But Where is like, he based? In Where? outside of Vancouver. Oh, okay. But, so anyway, he had a really hard year of like shitty work. He's like, we gotta go on a trip. And he's like, you wanna go to Australia? I was like, yeah, let's do it. So we got flight and we went out for a month and I stayed for another month and I have a really close friend there. And anyway, I met her friend and now I'm in love, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which all circles back to around, there's always a girl involved. Yeah, there's always a girl involved, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna go out there because it's, uh, this is my one life and it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't feel safe like, she's probably gonna be bummed and say this. It doesn't feel safe like career and life wise mm -hmm. to move to another country or, I'm going for three months to see how it goes, but sure. I just, like it feels right and I just have to do it. So, I can't argue I've always that. been in Vancouver, you know, like since I was 17. So it's like, it's a, it's a scary thing, but it's also, Australia has sort of been like a second home to me throughout the years, so. It's, it feels comfortable. Like, I just rented a house. Yeah. And I, I just bought a car there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, this big old van that I'm going to put, like, camper eyes and stuff. But, yeah. That's amazing. Man. Yeah. It's really cool. So. I mean, it's all about new. love, right? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know. She has a couple of kids, so it's like, that's where she's got to be. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm going to go out there and be with you guys. Yeah. Hey, so, more okay. power to you. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, skating there is rad, so. Sure. It's not like I'm not going to be able to skate. So. Mm -hmm. It's like in the Melbourne area. Nice. Yeah. That's See awesome. you soon, Melbourne. <laughs> well, I look forward to like a lot of uh, amazing Australian footage. Yeah, there better be. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. I still want to get on the road all the time and stuff like that. Yeah. And like have a Vancouver base as well. Yeah, but, for sure. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. That's okay. new. That's like a weird new thing for me. That's just not how I've done things. But yeah, whatever. Yeah, because in a sense, you said you were you always went with the flow, but now you're making a decision. Like a, it's a bit more it's of a, a decision. Concrete decision. Yeah, yeah. 
So it's, it's I'm a little like, but it, it is part of that river. Like mm -hmm. I got this, I was brought there. So nice. yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, follow us on Instagram, on YouTube, and uh, what, what did you just say? Smash that like Smash button. Smash that like button. <laughs> do they do that? <laughs> <laughs>